Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast. This is Elizabeth Chapel of Quilter Scandy. I'm very, very excited about this week's episode. It is completely unique, and I feel like I'm not going to have the opportunity to introduce something like this much in my lifetime. There is a brand new platform that I think could very much revolutionize businesses for quilters. And that's why I say I don't think this is going to happen often because I don't feel like that's going to happen very often. So, okay, before we dive in, however, I want to read this review because so much about it that I love. So let me read it and then thank Pitchfork Quilt Pieces for writing this. So Pitchfork Quilt Pieces says, I love Elizabeth from having a voice for radio to her fantastic mind, fabulous questions, and amazing guests. I love her personal episodes where she talks on a topic. I love when she features a guest from within the industry, and I love when she invites a marketing guest onto her show. I gain so much insight. There's never a dull moment. My favorite, though, is episode 41, which, side note, I need to now go myself and look what episode that is. By the way, this review took me about an hour to write because of so much hassle with understanding Apple Music and iTunes, but I'll do anything to help Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth. Wishing you the most success. Oh my goodness, Pitchfork Quilt Pieces, this is possibly one of the sweetest reviews because I know how much time and effort went into this review, and you know how much this means to the podcast, so thank you so much. And it's funny reading this review because I guess I am a typical female and I feel weird not only receiving compliments but then reading one out loud. I had no idea that people thought I have a voice for radio. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but that was one of the things that I was like, I want to have a podcast. I love asking questions and all the things, but like, really, I don't know if my voice will be enjoyable to listen to. So that means a lot. And just how much you are getting out of the podcast and how much time you spent writing this review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have not had a chance to go and write a review, hopefully it doesn't take you an hour to do that. I do wish that Apple was a little more intuitive, but, um, but please do if you haven't left a review yet. So this week, the platform that I'm introducing on the podcast is called Whatnot. And I've been talking to Carly, and I honestly cannot remember the title that she has at the company. I think I said last week in the podcast that she's the owner. She's not the owner. But she helps, I'll let her explain in her own words, because I'm going to get it wrong. But I've told Carly this next little bit of information, so I feel like it's fine for me to share it here. I have a friend, Belle of Seems So Me, who went and sold some things on Whatnot. And I heard through the grapevine, I didn't even hear from her. I heard from other friends who were like, hey, Belle went on this platform and sold so many things. It was very successful. It's called Whatnot have you guys checked it out? And I was like, uh, no, what is that? So I went and looked and saw it and then whatnot reached out and asked, Hey, would you like to meet? And honestly, had Belle not gone on it and had I not heard through the grapevine, I would have said no, because it's a startup company for one thing. It takes, there's something about social proof, right? Like having a friend who can vouch for it. So thank you, Belle, for unknowingly vouching for it through the grapevine. But how, how would you know? So it's a younger company and they're just, you know, recently ish reaching out into the quilting community and it's very different from anything I've ever done. And like branding, it's not their branding is obviously not my branding. So I was like, "Mm, I don't know. But because I heard of the success, I was like, I'm actually very intrigued. And because I teach a whole course on how to write and sell quilt patterns. And here is a brand new platform that could be really amazing for people to sell their patterns. So I hopped on a call with Carly and as we were talking and my mind started getting very excited about, oh my goodness, this could actually be very revolutionary for our industry, particularly shop owners, whether you're selling fabrics, notions, or patterns, this is a game changer. You just don't see that often. 
and I don't think a lot of people know about it yet or might you might be kind of hesitant because it is new and you may not have heard of it and you might be like what what is this so that's why when we were chatting I was like Carly can we do a podcast episode I need to share about this with my audience and can I go on your show and sell something so that I can experience it and speak to what that is like so coming up in a couple of weeks I believe June 7th, I'm still working out the date, uh, I'm going to be going live either June 5th, 6th or 7th in the evening. There is an event that they're hosting and I will be going on and sharing some products along with Liza Taylor. So we are going to be going on and selling and I just want to experience it, see what it's like so that I can actually go to my students and say, okay, here's a cool idea and I've tried it out and either it worked or it didn't. So um, I'm very hopeful that it's going to be amazing when I go on there because I know it's been amazing for other people. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let me introduce you to Carly and let's dive in so you can learn about this new platform and hopefully you can find it as amazing as I do. So excited to have you here, Carly. Thanks for being on the podcast. Can you introduce who you are and what you do for Whatnot? Of course. It's so nice to be here. I really appreciate you having it, having me and having Whatnot on the, on the podcast. Uh, so I am the general manager of the arts and handmade world over at Whatnot. So leading the charge, uh, expanding uh, our platform into the crafty, uh, the crafty community. Um, and helping people expand the the crafty careers that they're building onto our platform. I love it. So for our listeners, can you tell us, like, let's assume no prior knowledge. What mm-hmm. is what not the history of it? Like, what? how has it come to be? What does it do? Of course. So we're about, uh, I think at this point, about three and a half years old. And so we started a uh, right before the pandemic. And we initially started actually in the collectible space and live video shopping was not a part of a platform. Right now, I mean, now we are the largest and fastest growing live stream shopping marketplace in, in, the, in, the North, in North America. So come a long way from being a market, you know, a marketplace for, we initially started with Funko Pops, actually, those dolls with the big heads that are highly collectible. Uh, and we've, you know, discovered sort of early in the pandemic that, video was going to be a huge part of how people were going to engage going forward. And so once we launched that, it uh, it kind of exploded. And it's, we are, I sort of think of it like Twitch meets Etsy, uh, but there's a lot of different, you know, analogies that you can use. Uh, We are, it's live stream. Live stream is the primary mechanism by which sellers are interacting with customers uh, and it's a marketplace. So sellers can truly be, you know, a store in New York City or a content creator on YouTube or a person who is streaming and selling items from their from their basement. Uh, and it's really, uh, what's really cool about that is we started in collectibles and we found that live stream shopping has really taken off in niche highly engaged communities that are passionate about a topic or a product. And so when I started, uh, my, you know, my goal was to figure out how do we enter the arts and handmade world. And so I was, I looked for sort of where was the community uh, in the arts and handmade world that was most like that. And I think you probably know that quilters and sewers are very much meet that profile. Yes. I'm curious. Well, this is, This is making me so happy because I talk to my audience a lot about finding a niche and a lot of people in my audience are quilters and like, this is that, that amazing niche. So I'm curious to hear what are some other niches like knitting? I want to say crochet. Those are. Yes. That's another one for sure. Uh, We have a lot of, uh, a lot of content around, around knitting and crochet and that's within the arts and handmade outside of arts and handmade. We have like a really passionate, I mean, there's just, there's so many different communities that exist within the, within one platform. And that's what, like, one of the things that's really cool is you enter the platform and it says, what are you interested in? And based on what you select, when you open the app, you're going to see something entirely different from what everyone else is seeing. So if you like sports cards, you're going to see people selling sports cards. And that is going to be the content that you most engage with the things that you buy if you like vintage decor, you're going to see 
you know, I, I selected vintage decor as one of the things I like, and, you know, it's Pyrex collectors and swung, swing vases and all sorts of things that you might not even know about unless you're in that community. Um, hmm. Sneaker collectors are another one. Um, and then within the arts and handmade world, we've really been focusing, at least in the, you know, initial months on building up our community around fabric and patterns and quilts. This is so odd and off topic. And so I'll say it and then we'll get back. But the entrepreneurial part of my brain is very intrigued and could go down a major rabbit hole of wanting to know all these different niche markets. Like I don't, I bet there's Pokemon, but that I can come up with. So I would love that's to know a big all the one. markets. But yeah. Anyhow. So that's the nerdy part mm -hmm. of me. That's like, tell me all the niches. I want to know why. I don't no, and know. I totally get that. When I started, I, I, I feel like every time I open the app, I feel like an anthropologist. Like I just love to right. go in and see what the different communities are doing. Um, and even if it's not, you know, the community I'm working on or the community I, you know, associate with as a, as a buyer, uh, it's just so fascinating to see how deeply engaged these can, these communities can be. And I guess probably, well, I'm intrigued. Yeah. More like sociology, you know, what are people interested in, but also I guess from a marketing standpoint, like I just, Taylor Swift, Harry Potter, these fan bases, how are they marketing? Why? Like, why are people loving these Pyrex? That blew my mind. I didn't know that was a thing. So it's very, from a marketing standpoint, I'm like, how have they done that? How have they created these pockets of people? I, I love it. I find it fascinating. So, okay, back to whatnot. Thanks for, you know, <laughs> letting me go off on a tangent there. Um, this is perfect for my audience because a lot of people who are quiltrepreneurs, they're trying to figure out how to market their thing. Like one of the biggest questions I have is how do I launch? How do I get more sales? And then this fell in my lap. And it's like this amazing platform where people can sell from anywhere. Um, and so how, how do you choose who you're going to feature so I think there's, there's sort of two parts to that question, like who can sell on whatnot, and then how do we, you know, who do we highlight within within the app? Um, ah. So in terms of selling, we have a, we have an application. Um, you know, I think we have we call it a rigorous vetting process, and it is because we do want to be bringing our audience the highest quality content and items that they can sell. Um, but I think in the arts and handmade world, like who am I to say whether or not your art is any good? Um, it's, you know, it's very subjective. And so we look for people that are serious about it um, and will bring, you know, something high quality to the to our audience, uh, whether it's from a content perspective or from, you know, are they instructing something? Um, you know, we have a lot of quilt instructors and pattern designers um, and they're, everyone's bringing something really unique. And that actually is one of the things that kind of sets the arts and handmade world apart is that, you know, it's not a collectible where everyone knows the value of everything that exists. Um, now, fabric, of course, you know, I, I know there's like that old joke that, you know, there's two hobbies in quilting. Uh, fabric collecting and quilting. Uh, so definitely, you know, there's part, part of it is that, um, but we look for people that have, you know, access to inventory or, you know, some, if, and I think inventory is kind of a funny word here, you know, because I, if you're a pattern designer, of course you have unlimited access to inventory of your digital pattern. Um, and so, you know, you might only have made one pattern, but like you still have unlimited access and, you know, that counts too. Um, and then in other categories, we have looked for people that have, social presences, just like, are they serious about, you know, getting out there? Um, but that doesn't mean that you have to have a large audience in order to sell on our platform. Um, in fact, we, our favorite and best sellers are ones who have really built their audience within whatnot. Um, really? And I see a world they where, do that? you know, yeah. Um, you know, like any new platform, it, take, it can take a little time to kind of get noticed, get in the community. Um, but the really cool thing is we have all these features, these built in features. So giveaways, um, there's a feature where if you offer a giveaway in your stream, people have to follow you in order to in order to enter. And so that's how a lot of people have, you know, built up their initial following. Once you have followers, um, people will get notified every time you go live. Uh, so and people also form kind of this community of like a very supportive community of like knowing when your friends are alive. And a lot of the sellers are, you know, going in to support each other. Um, we have a feature called rating where people, you know, if, if a 
if a new seller is looking to get, you know, help build their audience and they happen to know someone or have in, maybe they're a buyer from an older seller who already has a large audience. You see this all the time. People do like a pop up and raid show. Uh, so someone who has 5,000 followers may pop up and do a 15 minute show and then raid a new seller. So that new seller is kind of starting right off the bat with a built in audience. Um, because you know, one of their, one of their cost, you know, one of their favorite sellers has, you know, is supporting them. And you see this a lot in all the categories of people just really wanting to support each other in a, a way that's not like the, it's obviously like they're competing, but I think especially in the handmade world, everyone has different things. No, no two people are said that selling the same handmade items. And even when we talk about fabric, Mm -hmm. most people have different fabric inventory too. Yep. I love it. It's very, very much up my alley of a rising tide lifts all boats, you know, and I love that. Who is the marketing genius behind this? Like who came up with this? With whatnot? Yeah. And like, and um, they imp- like, I'm assuming they're, they have a marketing team or a creative team that's like, oh, we should try this. We should add this, you know? So it's really, I mean, a lot of that is built into our product and we really operate under the, like, you hear this in business a lot, like what do users want and listen to users, get in the mind of users. One thing that's really unique and cool about working at whatnot is that there is a huge emphasis on dog fooding the product. Um, you know, that's, if you're familiar with the term dog fooding, it's kind of like an old tech term of you have to eat your own dog food. And I think it came from Purina and, you know, you know, back in the day, uh, sort of like this idea of you really have to be using your product and empathizing with the users. So everyone at whatnot is in the app all the time. Um, you know, going to shows and hosting shows. I've, you know, I was actually nervous about this when I started because I hate being videotaped. And I was like, oh, live streaming, like that sounds really scary. But like also interesting because like I clearly am joining the company. Uh, But when I started doing it, I was like, oh, wow, I actually really like this. Uh, It's fun and it's interactive and it's like about as scary as a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, because it's live, it's not, I think, you know, when you post stuff to Instagram, there's like, it's going to live forever. It's, it feels high pressure. Um, You know, it has to be perfect. This does not have to be perfect. Now, obviously you want to be good. um, Right. Like definitely, you know, having higher quality listings and, you know, having a good camera set up, like all of that is helpful and, you know, will definitely make people more effective, but it's not at all required. Um, and so I think like making it like, it's not scary is sort of the thing that I always like to remind people just try it. Like it's actually really an awesome experience. Uh, So I have so many questions. So first of all, okay. I meant to ask this a while back and I just remembered. So QVC, when you're like, it's stitch meets Etsy, is that right? I said Twitch, but there's like 10 different ways you can say that because we're, you know, (laughs) we're, we're we're so unique that we're like a combination of any one of 15 different things that exist, um, but not, uh, you know, not exactly like anything. Which is perfect. So when I bring up QVC, what, what does whatnot think about that? Is it like, oh no, we're not that. Or is it like, actually, yeah, you could kind of relate it to QVC. So I think there's something to be said for the fact that QVC has been as successful as it is for so long. Clearly people want to buy from people that are, you know, selling to them via video in their homes. Like there's clearly something there. Um, And I think we're kind of like the next generation of that. Like, whereas QVC is, you know, more produced, it's Mm -hmm. more, um, you know, it's like in a studio. um, Right. And I think we are democratizing it in a way of really yep. anyone can be their own, like can host their own show and sell and you don't need to, you know, apply and go to the studio to do it. Which I love. I love that. Like you want to do it, you can, you know, so, but okay. You did mention you have standards of quality. So who is the judge of that? Like, how do you know if this is a good quality thing? Cause you said it doesn't necessarily matter if you have a large audience. So we're not judge. Like I would say like, we're not the, the quality police. I think, you know, the market will decide. Um, Meaning and I think you like know, 
if it sells well, we'll do it again or, or like, yeah, how, yeah. Tell me. I more. think, yeah. So, I mean, as a seller, you are, you're in control of your channel and your content and, but also, you know, you're a business person. And so what we tend to see, what we tend to see is that if one person does something and it works really well within a few days, it permeates through the system because everyone's paying attention to what's going on. Um, okay. And I think similarly, if someone does something and it doesn't work, you're not going to see a lot of it because clearly, you know, it wasn't an effective strategy. Okay. So I think I'm realizing my more of what I don't understand about whatnot. So it sounds like on the platform, and you mentioned this, there's the two ways to sell. And so your watch, anyone can go and sell on platform A, and then there's the featured people. And so you're watching who's doing well on platform A, and then they're invited to come and do option B, which is... No, so it's one platform, um, but we do have, like, we'll have events that we are more curated. So, for example, you know, we may have a content creator from YouTube that is coming on to do a tutorial. And as part of that, you know, whatever the tutorial, the topic of that tutorial is, we'll find some, we'll find other sellers that are doing similar things and create what we call a rate, like what gets called a raid train. So, you know, the very popular content creator brings in their audience from outside and we say, oh, you know, welcome to the platform. Here's the content you came in for, but oh, by the way, you know, they have five more sellers like this one afterwards. And so cool. getting pulled into those featured events tends to be, you know, A, is it relevant? And B, like, you know, are you doing things that we know work? Um, and it's not even really a measure of quality. It's a measure of effectiveness. Like we, yep. if you upload photos, there is a much likely chance, high, like more likely chance that you will sell your items and Yes, it's oh, more tell work. us more. What else works? Tell us all the tricks um, of the trade. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, of course, you know, the, the marketplace evolves. We're always adding new features. So things will change over time. Actually, even this is actually very relevant, but even just yesterday, we released a feature where make, sellers can get tipped. Um, and that's oh, like cool. really exciting for people. It's something our, our users have been asking for for ages. And I think it's extremely relevant in this industry um, because people, you know, are craving tutorials. Um, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, makers, your teachers, um, want to make sure they like, want to be compensated for that, um, as they should be, you know, you should, you know, it, you're giving something away. And I think ha are allowing our users to show that they are valuing the content. Um, and people have sort of been doing it in unofficial ways. You know, people mm -hmm. may, bid up the price of an item as a thank you for, hmm. um, to a seller. So it's kind of like an unofficial tip. Like I'm just going to pay you more for this item. Um, but now we've created that as an official feature. Uh, which so is really I'm intrigued. Fun. Yeah. Let's say there's someone who's been on YouTube or no, let's, let's even go back further. There's someone who's thinking I should start a YouTube channel. Could this be a different platform? To, like if they create a tutorial, would it live there forever? It does. We have a we have a like a feature right now called video on demand, where essentially you can opt into having your live streams recorded, and then people can go watch them. Um, I would say it works best if you're doing something where you're selling like a kit or something. Maybe you're doing a demo, and there's also a you know an associated kit with it. Um, yeah. Because that way you can say, oh, you know, I'm going to show you the product. I'm going to show you how it works. And by the way, if you buy it, you can come back and watch me, you know, rewatch this after. Because cool. um, the thing that really sets us apart from the other video platforms is that commerce is fully integrated. A buyer has a profile. Uh. They enter their credit card one time. They enter their address one time, maybe twice nice. if they're sending a gift. Um, but it's so easy you can buy literally by moving your thumb half an inch across the screen okay I we love actually that. it used to just be like you literally touched a button and like it was almost too easy to buy uh, so uh, we made it like <laughs> slightly like, harder Wait a by minute. making it a swipe but like i didn't mean to do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> undo undo <laughs> oh that's funny so okay and then you had mentioned something about education which makes me wonder when someone's selling 
can they sell, you mentioned a PDF, can they sell paper, physical products? Can they sell, it does it have to be a product that is shippable or deliverable or can it be join me for this course, you know? Yeah. So I would say you can pretty much sell anything and then there's like, there's what you can do. And then there's what's like productized and optimized. So PDFs as a great example, and we are, we have this in beta right now. So right now you can sell a PDF um, and it will, but it, you know, it won't automatically send to the user. So there's just like a little bit more work involved, but that said, hopefully by the time, you know, if anyone's listening to this in a few months, uh, you know, this product will actually exist um, because we are a tech company and we're constantly, you know, investing in new features. Similarly with like a course, like you could sell tickets to a course. It just, we just won't automatically fulfill it in that way. Um, but it's, it's definitely doable. Um, you know, if you think about kind of like hmm. what's required to sell things, it's payment processing and, you know, for physical goods shipping, and that's all built in. Um, and then as we get into different like variations of products, we will be able to offer other, you know, other ways to sell too. We do have a feature uh, we're called a private stream. So we had actually um, a woman by the name of So Becca. Well, her, her name is actually just Becca, but she goes by So Becca on YouTube and she has a membership program and she was doing a fabric sale and she was like, well, I really want to give my members first dibs. So she hosted before she did her, you know, public sale for everyone. She hosted a private stream just for the members. Uh, and it was like a really small, you know, a small audience. I think she had like 40 people in the stream half of them made purchases. Um, hmm. and so really high, like incredibly high conversion. They had a, a blast. Yeah. They all knew each other. They were in the chat, you know, just having like a great so cool. time. Um, and like that kind of, that is available as, as a feature that's built in. So for that, would you, do you send like a private link invitation to exactly. certain people? Okay. Exactly. This is, my mind is going behind the scenes. You cannot tell how much is going through my brain right now of like, oh my gosh, I'm very excited about this platform because it offers so much potential for sellers, you know, like it's yes. very exciting. I think I it's a really that. exciting place to build a business not only because of the features, but also just because of the connection that you can make with your customers. Yeah. Um, and it's doing some marketing for us. So like I can bring my audience, exactly. but you're also going to bring me some new people, which is very valuable. Yeah. I mean, if everyone brings even just five people and like five people is not that many, if everyone brings their mom, like right. that alone would be a massive community. Everyone just brought their mom. <laughs> I'm very excited about this potential. So I am curious if I go on and I don't know, sell a PDF or a paper pa a pattern, quilt pattern. Do I then get the email addresses of the people for me? I like that's very valuable or do I, or not? Uh, so not nor, so normally no, um, because they haven't, um, necessarily like they haven't opted into like marketing from, from people. I think, yep it's an interesting question because it's something that like we may, I can see that being obviously very high value mm -hmm. um, to what I would say is we do have, like we, a, a lot of people will say like, Hey, you know, here I am on whatnot. Come follow me on Instagram. Yep. You know, sign up for my newsletter. Um, yep. And so I've definitely, if I look at like who is following some of the sellers who like, I see people whose names I recommend, like I recognize just because I know them from the platform. And so there's definitely a lot of people wanting to connect with each other, not just on whatnot. Although obviously, you know, there's a lot of great ways to connect on whatnot as well. So for someone who is selling, what, obviously this is a business for you guys as well. So mm -hmm. what kind of profit margin um, and, and for my listeners, I just want to point out, it's still worth it. Well, depending on what the profit margin is, if it's like a hundred percent, obviously not worth it, but, it is um, not. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, what's, what's the profit margin that you guys keep? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, it, we, we think it's a commission. So we're a marketplace. We're not a retailer. So we are not buying your patterns and reselling them on your behalf, you know, at a markup. You are the seller, you are the merchant, you set the prices, um, and you, you know, based on kind of what you want your margin to be. And then we have a, 
what I believe to be a very competitive commission. Um, it's, you know, I don't, we don't talk public, publicly about exactly what that number is, but I will say it's very competitive in the industry and relative to other marketplaces. Um, and then we also have payment processing, which, you know, you can't really avoid. Um, and it's the, the, the small price to pay for being able to have buyers check out with the swipe of a finger. Um, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to credit cards. <laughs> I know. Right. Right. Which side note, I did have someone send me an invoice the other day and I went to go pay it and they had me pay the difference of that fee. And I was both appalled and like, wait a minute, I can do that. I can make other people pay that. <laughs> I think PayPal lets you do that. <laughs> I mean, and I, I think, you I know, know we're a marketplace. So everyone sets like as the seller, you set your prices. And like, if you want to factor in the payment processing by marking your prices up by, you know, right. Yeah. I think it's like 3%, whatever, you know, whatever yep. that number is. And like that, you should do that. Um, and that's same with shipping. We have our shipping is fully built into the system. So we essentially auto populate like what the cost of shipping will be. Um, we have extremely competitive rates with um, our friends that the U.S. Postal Service um, and we, you know, the buyer, the, the default is that the buyer pays it. And then it gets, you know, if you buy multiple things from a seller over the per, per over a live, like the shipping is all bundled together, encouraging people to buy more things from, you know, from each person. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we're introducing okay. new features that will allow the seller to kind of, if they'd prefer to, you know, if they'd prefer to offer free shipping and, you know, charge higher, you know, make up for it mm. with, you know, in, with their margin other ways, like that is going to be available to them oh, soon. So if you do the shipping, like I'm assuming then how this would look technically, I would tell you how much something weighs and what the box measurements would be. And then you create a shipping label and email it to the seller and they print it. Is that right? It's, we have, it's on our platform. So you would just go in and generate and you, it's really just based on USPS cares about weight. Um, and then they have, okay. what's really cool. And especially in, you know, fabric, if, if anyone is selling fabric, flat rate boxes are going to be coming soon. Oh, nice. And you okay, can put good. a lot of, a lot of heavy fabric in a flat rate box. <laughs> you Yes. You gotta, we all know people who ship fabric, you are like, fitting everything in there and just like squeezing it and taping it. And yeah, so yes, we do know that. So the profit margins, then it's, it, I'm assuming that that's like individual basis. You talk about, it might be a different percentage based on different things or. So we have, um, we have like a standard, a standard commission. So okay. um, it's very, it's competitive. Um, and then I would say like, in terms of what like the seller's margin is, is based on, you know, what are your costs and, yeah. What are you, yep. you know, what are you charging? And I think, I mean, as you know, if you're selling digital patterns, high margin, you know, of course, right. once, you, yep. once you make back the, the time you spent exactly. <laughs> creating the pattern. <laughs> yeah. All the things that go into it, then it's just net profit. So I love that. So then I'm curious for myself included, since I am going to be going live with Liza Taylor in June, which I am curious if you can share more about that event in a minute, but, um, what does this look like? Is it just going to be me with my camera, whether that's my phone or my computer, and I'm going to be, you know, what kind of equipment do I need to go live? Yeah. So I think I always say, unless you've been actively doing, you know, live streaming or video content on other platforms that start and like you have another setup that you know works and you really like, you Which can just start not. with your phone. Okay. And that's Perfect. totally fine. I stream from my phone. Um, I think we have, you know, like when we bring on YouTubers, they always have like these really sophisticated setups and I'm like very impressed by it. You know, like right. their head is in the corner and they're showing multiple screens. <laughs> that's great. I mean, that, that is available to you. If you, you know, are familiar with those platforms, we do have integrations with OBS and things that, you know, I didn't even know about. Um, I know. I'm like, and, oh, yes. I'm envious in the best way of all of that stuff. I wish I could snap my fingers and like, oh, I have that, you know. But, but you really don't cool. need it um, because most people are watching on their phones. And so vertical, you know, camera from your phone is actually perfect. Uh, okay. Good lighting obviously mm -hmm. is, is helpful. I, you know, I got a ring light off of Amazon <laughs> yeah. for $15. Um, and, you know, I think also just especially depending on like if you're selling something, you know, 
I think we all know, like in the handmade world, like you want to be able to really show off the goods. Yeah. Um, so you want to have good lighting. You want to be able to kind of get close to the camera. Um, I love, like, I personally love watching a split screen because I like to see the person and also the product. Uh, but that's like, again, very easy to do. Um, how do you need to have two phones or how, how does one do that? I, I feel very naive that I'm asking this, but there we um, are. How I don't want, do I don't want to misspeak and tell and say exactly. Cause we have like a detailed FAQ that probably that will oh, okay, explain this perfect. much, be much better than I can. Um, but yeah, for a split screen, you would, I think you can do front and back actually. So you don't even need two phones. Hmm. Uh, you just need to be set up in a, like an optimal way so that you have things on the front and the back. <laughs> I feel so like out of my league right now. Why do I feel so uncomfortable? But you don't like, have to really? be. You don't have to be. Like a phone is like what you're doing right now, a phone, a computer is totally sufficient. Um, okay. And that's sort of what I was saying before is it's very, because it's live, it doesn't need to be produced. Okay. It doesn't have to be scary or, you know, and I think the more we always say like do it for when we, when we onboard a new seller, we always encourage them to kind of, Give it a few months, um, try it out, see what works for you. The same thing isn't going to work for everyone that works for one person. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's like also kind of what makes it special is that everyone's bringing something unique and different to the platform, which is why people keep coming back. I love it. So is it unlimited? Anyone who wants can go and open up a profile and start selling on whatnot. So you do need to apply to go live. Um, so that is, and that everyone can make an, an account. Everyone can and should make an account. Um, I think and you bye, will bye, have bye. A, <laughs> you'll have a link uh, where you'll be able to give your your audience uh, some money to spend in the app as well. Ooh, fun! Um, Yay. So everyone should come should should definitely do that. Uh, and also, even if you're planning to sell, I think coming in and just seeing the app and like getting to know the existing sellers is a great way to get started. Um, and then we have an application process, but you know. We, we also have a referral program, so you'll, you, you will have a seller referral link, and anyone who uses your link will kind of go to the top of the pile from, a, from an application perspective uh, because we love referrals. Referrals are, you know, somebody has recommended that you would be good to the mm -hmm. platform, and so we're, we're, we're pretty quick at reviewing applications. It takes one to two days. Um, and then we have an onboarding process, which is – you know, me or one of my colleagues explaining how everything works, making sure you feel confident and ready to go. Um, and then once that happens, you can go live as often as you want. And there's, there's no cost to go live. Uh, we only, um, we only make money when you sell items. Uh, so we're mutually incentivized to, uh, yeah. to grow your sales. Is it weird when you talk about like, when you refer someone, it goes to the top of the list. It instantly makes me feel like I need to be very, particular with who I refer because I don't want to tarnish my name so that you're like oh that's from Elizabeth hers aren't that good you no, know? Like, no no <laughs> no no uh, and I think also you know no I it would don't don't feel don't feel like that you can I think anyone who I think the other thing like we're a new platform I, we don't know what's going to work and so you know the best sellers are not the ones who necessarily had the best applications. Um, okay. I would say the best sellers are the ones who come in and are really excited to, you know, spend time on the platform and invest in building their business. Um, we had, I, we had a seller come to talk to our team a few weeks ago and she's, you know, been on the platform, I think about a year and she's, you know, has thousands of followers and she was like, Oh, you know, I applied three times. Um, really? Somehow she fell through the cracks and now she's one, you know, she's a great seller. She's an advocate for the platform. Um, she's really popular and, you know. Can you share who it is? Now I'm like, I got to go check this person out. Uh, I think her name is Moms and Crumbs. Um, she sells in the women's fashion category. Hmm. Like she sells her own things or she's reselling or she's reselling. So there's a big uh, part of the, there's a big part of the app around fashion resale. I just want to go shopping so bad right now. <laughs> Everything you mentioned, I'm like, Please. I want to buy it. I want to buy it. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's really like fun, the things you can buy. And I, I'm actually, I'm wearing, you can't, you won't be able to see this, but I'm wearing a necklace that I bought on, on whatnot right now. Um, and I've gotten really into 
handmade jewelry. I like um, it. I love that I can, you know, bring that to work and kind of showcase, you know, a support the community and the, uh, mm-hmm. the amazing makers in the community, but also, you know, I get so many compliments when I wear the earrings that I bought and whatnot. And, you know, being able to kind of go into that person's stream and tell her that, um, you know, I think it's sort of like going to a craft fair, except that you can find the person again. You know, yeah. if I yep. bought earrings at a craft fair, you know, I may get a ton of compliments and, you know, they're not going to be at the same craft fair next week necessarily. This is such a good point because I've gone to those craft fairs and some of those people I really connect with in their booth, you know, and then they're gone. And I'm like, well, you know, that was cool. But this, it's like you have a relationship and you can see them again and again. Yeah. And I can, you know, now whenever she goes live, I want to go say hi and, you know, see what she has that's new uh, and, you know, support her. And kind of she knows, you know, we know, we now know each other. And I don't have to travel in person to this. Oh, now well, that's the other thing. It's and... very easy to do it. I mean, it's it's. I think we went to we went to QuiltCon um, a few months back, and I was sort of feeling like my vision for the quilting and sewing part of the app is that it feels like QuiltCon all the time. You know, just like so cool people that are excited about the craft have a lot in common maybe, you know, interested in, spe- you know, maybe spending some money or even just seeing kind of what's available, what's out there. And, you know, every booth had something different. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that exciting kind of like the energy um, of that, uh, you know, really bringing people together. That's what this, like, that's what what not feels like when, when it really mm. starts to take off in a community. Okay. So now that's got me thinking, and I'm curious if you can tell me, when I'm thinking of QuiltCon, there are certain booths that draw me in just visually. Are there certain people when they go live that they have an amazing backdrop and that does better? Like, does do their sales do better? So a lot of people, a lot of people do. Um, I always love, you know, I mean, quilting, I always like a nice quilt hanging behind you. Um, mm-hmm. I think actually one of my one seller, I'll just give a shout out to her name is Quarter Life Leap, Caitlin. And she's really into rainbows. And so she's often standing in front of her stash. Um, cool. And it's yeah. like beautifully color coordinated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I mean, it love makes to sense. see that. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, I mean, yeah, all the, honestly, they're like most of the, the really like the good fabric sellers just have beautiful backdrops because they're streaming from their craft room. And, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it looks, it looks beautiful because they want to surround themselves with beautiful things. Um, yep. I mean, that's we do branding, have so right? in the app. You don't necessarily like if you go to the homepage and you sort of see what's happening, what's live. You see what's what we call a trailer photo, and so everyone can upload an like a photo to highlight their sale. And so people get really creative with Canva, um, you know, putting up a cool picture of what you have to sell. You know, a little text on it, so people have an idea of what you know what you have going on. And then you can also upload a video. So oh, cool. before your sale starts, people can click into and see the video, see what you have like on offer um, and get excited about the sale. And then once the show is live, as you're scrolling in the app, you can actually see like a little, like it will essentially autoplay in the feed. So you can see without even clicking into it, what what's happening uh, in the sale and decide if you want to click in. Man, my mind is going with so many ideas right now. So this is very exciting for me. And how long, when somebody goes live, how long are, how long does that last? And is it up for like, I just want to be on for 10 minutes or you have a 45 minute slot type of a thing? It's not slots because it's really, we do do like when we do an event, um, when we do a train, we'll like have people sign up for slots just because then we can ensure that, you know, the the train keeps moving. Uh, But if someone is, you know, just, picking their own schedule and they are, you know, you can go live for whenever you want for however long you want. Um, so uh, we had, I always like to tell the story cause I think it's funny. I did not encourage everyone to do this, but we had one guy who had so much fabric to sell that he was like, I'm going to do a 12 hour fabric show. And he literally <laughs> was live for 12 hours. Oh, tell and me he was like, I'm eating something now. Or like, I need to go to the bathroom. Like, what did he do? I assume that? he took bathroom breaks. <laughs> Obviously right. didn't watch all 12 hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was called like his, it was called the 12 hour fabric show. And like he, like, he did, I mean, it was a, he made a lot of money in 12 hours. 
Uh, it was a big sale. So cool. I would oh, say like yeah. not like I do not encourage everyone to do that, but I do right, think right. you know obviously that's one extreme. And then you have you know people who are you know I'm just gonna pop up and you know go live, say hi to people. If you go out in the morning, there's always a lot of people who are not necessarily even doing sales. They're doing like just chat with me, like sit and have coffee with me. You know, hmm. because it's a community, it's you know people want to be with their community. Yeah. So do you get a notification? Is there an app for whatnot? Yes. We and are. And do you app. get notifications like so-and-so is on right now or so-and-so is yeah, on so tomorrow? when you, fo- so basically the way it works is you download, you tell us what you're interested in. Maybe you check out a few shows and then you'll start to get You get notifications based on your viewing history. So like occasional notifications that we, you know, think might be relevant to you. Um, And then you could, you'll also get notifications based on sellers you follow. So if, you know, let's say you went live, you offered a giveaway. If people had to follow you to enter the giveaway, they're now your followers and you go live. And um, I think they just changed exactly how this works, but most of the time, you know, you'll, you go live. Some, I, I see apps like notifications on my app, my app all the time. And it's like, you know, Quilters Candy is live right now with XYZ show. Um, and then I'm like, oh, you know, actually I do want to see that. I wasn't, I wasn't planning on opening the app, but right. I guess I'll just check that out. <laughs> <laughs> and does it send, does it send an email like Quilters Candy will go live tomorrow or I don't know, letting people know if they're following somebody that it, it not automatically. We do, we do like curated marketing emails, uh, and kind of depending on the category, like what, what the cadence is. And those will generally go out to people that have, you know, watched in the category or bought in the category or have said they like that seller. Um, and all of that is because it's curated. It's kind of, it's not automatic. Like that's not, there's not like necessarily specific logic to that. Um, so there's there's op- there's a lot of different ways to kind of get the word out. We also have an Instagram handle. Um, okay. Where we'll shout out people that are going live. Um, so right now it's dependent on our t- on our end, telling our people like, hey, come and check out. Which then incentivizes, let's say, me to go and release something brand new or do a flash sale, mm-hmm. something you can't get anywhere else, so that they go yes. and check it out. Yes. I think it what you know, initially getting people from outside, it's always good to give people a reason to tune in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's true for any content yep. that is yep. out there on the internet. You know, you want to make it compelling. Um, definitely, you know, people love an exclusive. I, I would love to see a world where the place that you go when you are releasing your new quilt pattern is whatnot. Yep. Um because, you know, Instagram is great for showing finished products and making beautiful pictures. It's not great for sales. Let's be it's honest. It's not great for selling. Um, and, you know, I love Instagram. We have, we have an Instagram right. handle too. I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful place, especially if you're following a lot of the people that we follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not optimized for selling. And no. the great thing is, and it's not as interactive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. You know, if you, you know, have a pattern sale, you know, a pattern release coming up, like, you know, we had, we actually had someone, we had a a woman named Claudia Porter. She, she does patterns for Island Batik. She did a exclusive pattern release only on whatnot. And she, you know, leading up to it, you know, she, instead of posting pictures of the actual pattern, she posted, you know, teasers. Um, Mm. And then the day of she changed the photo into what the actual pattern was. This is so fun, so intriguing. And it also highly benefits the community. Like I am more benefited by bringing my friends on and having their audience come on to whatnot so that your people are going to be seeing that I'm selling something. So it really is that yeah. rising tide, you know, lifts all boats. Yeah. And we want I, more and people I think that here. What's really cool is that something that is you, that doesn't really exist on, you know, other platforms is the idea that you really can kind of curate a channel if you want. Like if you, if you said, you know what, let's say Wednesdays are, you know, pattern release Wednesdays, we would think of a much better name. Um, right, right. <laughs> much better name than that. But uh, let's just say, you know, you had five people and you guys could plan a train where, you know, everyone goes from one to the next to see all the different, you know, all the different things that are available um, from, you know, a community of sellers. And we see sellers doing this 
all the time organically. A few weeks ago, there was an event halfway to Halloween, uh, and it was a bunch of people, you know, crafters from all sorts of, all different mediums selling Halloween-themed crafts uh, in in May. <laughs> halfway. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a... And it was hugely successful. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't know that I would have known that it was going to be successful, um, but they're the community and they know it best. Well, and speaking again to, let's just, the quilt pattern launch, on Instagram, even if you have a reel, it's stale, you know, like here I'm talking, I'm able to, anytime you're able to interact and engage and show yes. something, your sales will be better because even think as a customer, if someone's showing you a photo of a product, you're like, eh. but if you can see it and like you're, yeah, I don't know, it's just a better sale. Like, and conversion as a result is very high. Yeah. Um, because not only just, you know, better view of the product, able to ask questions. Also, I think just like you're, you're literally talking to a person. They can see, you know, they see you join the room. They know you're there. Um, and I think, you know, just wanting to kind of support people who you know um, or who you in have interacted with um, is really is really special and meaningful. So could a person, I'm trying to think how this would work because I do have some courses and a membership, can you sell those kinds of things? And if so, do you then take a percentage of that initial sale or an ongoing if it's like a membership? So we don't currently have like a subscription product. Um, so like the idea of a membership being something that is charged on a regular basis. I know it's something that people have asked for and I know that it's something that's very relevant in this community. Um, and, you know, this is not the only community that it's relevant in. And I think, you know, the way we think about our product roadmap is we listen to users and we make what we build, what, what is relevant to them. So definitely something that is on our, like on our minds, I guess, as we think about a future roadmap, uh, doesn't exist today. I think in terms of courses, I think we, I think I, maybe I said this earlier, but we, you can sell, you know, you can essentially sell kind of like a ticket to, to get the, to get access to, to the course. Okay. Yeah. I, my brain, I just, I need to like go process all the ideas, <laughs> but I did want to talk a little bit. So as I mentioned, Liza Taylor and I will be coming on, I guess the term is a train. Is that right? Yeah. Well, we're calling that. So the upcoming event, we're having a, we're calling it a shop hop, although it's really for, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be like a brick and mortar shop necessarily to participate. Um, but the idea being it's a three night event with trains on each night, um, mingled with, you know, some exclusive content, some, you know, some celebrity guests, um, like yourself and that's very you know, flattering. <laughs> some, some shops that are, you know, everyone's going to kind of have different, different products available. Um, and this is an event we're planning this, this specific event for the first week in June, but we do this literally every week. We have a different kind of an event with a different theme, um, sort of based on what the community is asking for and, you know, what kinds of things, really just even ideas that sellers have on their own. That's 